Two companies notably, Toyota and Hyundai, continue to press on with what I think is a noble experiment, the hydrogen electric vehicle. Like this, the Toyota Mirai. In fact, this is the second generation of its hydrogen car. It's excellent. It's peppy. It rides well. It's dead quiet. It's quite luxurious. But of course, there's the issue of where do you fuel it up? Hop in. It's time for Family Wheels. Family Wheels is not powered by hydrogen or electricity or gasoline, petrol if you wish. It's driven by your likes. Likes help spread the word. While you're at it, hit subscribe and click the notification bell. And if the Mirai provokes your thoughts, leave a comment. Thanks. Quite apart from the amazing technology of the Mirai is its look. This is perhaps one of the best looking Toyota or Lexus vehicles in recent memory. Compared to the first generation, it is longer, also lower. It's based on the TNGA-L platform. That's really important. That's the same as under the big Lexus vehicles. So you have quite a luxurious car, quite a large car, also quite conventional looking, but my how the styling has cleaned up. The angry fish mouth has been dialed right back. We have this nice blunt end here at the front and then down the sides, not uninteresting, but also very clean. Similarly at the rear, nothing overdone, nothing too gimmicky looking on this car. And here is where the magic happens. Well, it didn't always happen here. In the first generation Mirai, the fuel cell stack was under the cabin floor. Now it's been moved up to the area that we commonly know as the engine bay. Hydrogen from the fuel tanks and air entering from the intake grill meet in the fuel cell stack. There, a chemical reaction involving oxygen and hydrogen sends electrons to the drive motor and the small battery. Water's the only tailpipe emission in a fuel cell vehicle. I have driven both, and this feels as quiet as a Rolls Royce. The electric motor, one electric motor, is in the rear. It's way back there. It's not up front. The previous Mirai was front wheel drive. 50-50 weight distribution in this vehicle. That's quite a surprise. Pretty nimble for a big car. The torque kicks in thanks to the fuel cell and hybrid drive combined. See ya. We've got 20 inch tires, fair bit of uh, rubber on the road, and that certainly helps the braking. Linear, not grabby, really befitting a uh, large luxury car. Fueling, of course, is the elephant in the room when it comes to FCEVs, fuel cell electric vehicles. There are almost no hydrogen fueling stations in all of Canada. This area, Vancouver, has most of them, but that's just four more are planned. A fifth is in Victoria. The situation is substantially better in California, which is basically the only place in the U.S. that you can get hydrogen for a car. The Los Angeles area has many fueling stations. Similarly, the San Francisco, San Jose corridor, you'll go a long time between fill-ups because the Mirai has excellent range. This luxury spec limited trim is claimed to have 574 kilometers, while the base XLE has 647. That's 357 miles and 402 miles respectively. Amazingly, it means I could do a Vancouver, Seattle round trip with more than 100k to spare. Let's see if we can make it work. There was one glitch, the touch screen was not cooperative at first, but the problem soon went away and did not occur at a different location. Issues reported by users include the nozzle freezing to the car, requiring a number of minutes to thaw. But the main complaint is delays due to lining up behind other hydrogen vehicles to use a single pump. That'll be no surprise to battery electric vehicle drivers who face the same delays even with multiple chargers at a station. Despite the soaring popularity of battery electric vehicles and rapid expansion of charging stations, I don't think the fuel cell EV is headed for the museum of failed technology. One area of opportunity is light duty vehicles that get constant use. 
Taxis, ride-hailing cars, delivery vans. Cities have thousands of them, and all their emissions could be eliminated by fuel cell EVs with a fraction of the downtime spent recharging battery electric vehicles. The H2 fueling infrastructure could even be proprietary to an individual company's distribution center or open to all, the way card lock stations now work with gasoline and diesel fuel. There's also potential for hydrogen and heavy vehicles. Hydrogen fuel cell buses have been around for years from numerous manufacturers, still on a small but increasing scale. And days after the first version of this review appeared, Toyota said a test involving 10 Kenworth trucks equipped with fuel cell electric drivetrains was successful. The big Class 8 tractors hauled cargo from the Port of Los Angeles, specifically San Pedro, as far as the Inland Empire, able to go more than 300 miles or about 500 kilometers with a gross combined vehicle weight of up to 82,000 pounds, about 37,000 kilograms. Refueling time was 15 to 20 minutes within a few minutes of a diesel fill-up. Now, in 2023, at its largest plant, Georgetown, Kentucky, Toyota will begin making fuel cell modules for sale to truck manufacturers, a kit that will weigh more than a diesel engine, but vastly less than a battery electric setup. The difference can be used for cargo. Most importantly, hydrogen can cut into the disproportionate amount of greenhouse gases heavy trucks generate. The hydrogen highway looks to be decades out. Japan, California, and Germany lead the way, but infrastructure cost is the biggest barrier. So the benefit calculation involves upfront costs versus how many vehicles can be handled per day. Perhaps we'll see both types at the same location. But the mere existence of series production vehicles like the Mirai, Japanese for future, shows the fuel cell holds promise. Toyota developed its fuel cell technology in-house and has released more than 5,000 related patents royalty-free. Our luxurious top trim review car is not eligible for government subsidies in Canada, but the base model XLE gets $5,000 from Ottawa, while here in BC the rebate can be up to $4,000 but is income tested. The U.S. $8,000 federal tax rebate on the Mirai has been eliminated, but Toyota itself is throwing money at customers. Deals include up to $25,000 cash back or a $15,000 fuel card from Toyota Financial Services. Offer not valid in Canada. Well, this is a shock. You get a big car, you expect a lot of space. That's not the case here, at least with the rear-facing child seat behind me, the one that takes up the most space. Up front, I'm 5 feet 11 inches tall, 180 centimeters. I can't even get into the front passenger seat. So, the child seat you have in the rear better be of the forward-facing variety. The lack of rear seat room doesn't just affect child seats. My knees are up against the driver's seat, driver's seat set for me, and my feet are touching the underside of the seat in front of me. Now, I don't think it's because of anything to do with the hydrogen tanks. However, there is a hybrid battery behind us. Very disappointing back here, especially when you consider how much luxury is going on. We've got a full set of uh, climate controls and seat heat and seat ventilation and even audio controls, as well as, of course, the panoramic moonroof. <music> That's our look at the 2022 Toyota Mirai. I think it's a remarkable vehicle. But what do you think? Leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for liking, and thanks for subscribing. I'm Richard Detman, and I'll see you next time on Family Wheels. <music>